Hey everybody, welcome back to Chris's Trains and Things. Today we are here with the brand new, just delivered to Lionel like last week, Pennsylvania L1 Mikado. This is from the Volume 2 catalog from 2022 and it is July, just the begin very beginning of July of 2023 and it's here. So less than a year after it was cataloged, it was here. This is a new tooling from, from for Lionel from MTH. So MTH purged a bunch of toolings a few years ago when Mike Wolf claimed they was they were closing the business down. This now we all know MTH isn't closed. They're still producing engines and rolling stock and so forth, but they did sell a bunch of tooling. So Lionel and Atlas, and this is one that Lionel was able to pick up. This is a great little locomotive. It comes with legacy Bluetooth. The whole works that you'd expect from a legacy locomotive, Stax team, whistle steam. It has two speakers in that tiny tender. It's a cool little doghouse tender on this. There were a few different variations of the L1 Mikado catalog, and we'll talk about those a little bit briefly here today. And then we're going to send this thing around the layout. Like I said, these were just delivered. There's still many of them available from local shops. I was able to snag this one from Berkshire Station. My buddy landed at Berkshire Station. I was able to get these pretty early on. And so I was able to get one of these pretty early. He still has some in stock, so be sure to check out Berkshire Station if you're interested in picking one of these up and you haven't already. But there's a couple different versions, not just this one from PRR out there. So let's dive in, talk about the prototype, and we'll talk about which ones Lionel has issued in their catalog from 2022. All right, so the L1 Mikado was built between 1914 and 1919 by the PRR's Juniata Shops, as well as Baldwin Locomotive Works, and from what I've been researching, as well as... Um, Lima also. <clears throat> a total of 574 L1 Mikados were built. They are the largest of the 282 class locomotives. These were the powerhouses of the PRR until the M1 Mountains arrived in 1923. Some of these were ended up going off to other railroads. That's fairly typical. Railroad builds them, they use them, and then they, they ship them off to other railroads and sell them. And that's how there are L1 Mikados with other road names, not just Pennsylvania which were cataloged by Lionel during the 2022 Volume 2 catalog season. Those included not just PRR, but also a Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton, Lehigh Valley, and New England, and a Santa Fe version as well. The Santa Fe version comes with a brass hybrid tender, probably from the brass hybrid Mikados from a few years ago. And it's an oil tender, not a coal tender like you'd see on all the other ones, which is kind of neat. I've seen pictures of the Lehigh and New England version. It comes with a black boiler because the Lehigh New England was fairly cheap. They kind of stripped their locomotives down, painted them just a flat black. Because of that flat color, which is prototypical from what I've found, it does mute a lot of the rivet detailing and the ribbing detailing on the boiler and so forth. So that's just something to keep in mind. The ATSF version looks really really nice from what i've seen now this is obviously the pennsylvania version so we have it in a brunswick green there's been some criticism over lionel over their brunswick green colors of late ryan said they're continuing to work on that this is definitely a greener brunswick than say the m1 mountain that i have i have a, an m1a in my fleet it's much darker almost to the point where it looks black this is obviously more green than that. I would say this is less green than the H10s from the 2017 release, which got a lot of criticism for being way too green. However, this is greener than that M1. I think it's important that we go ahead and share that. Now, this does have an electrocoupler on the rear of the tender. We have two speakers in the tender as well, so it puts out some pretty good sound. We do have whistle steam, which was added by Lionel, and lots of add-on and road-specific detailing. As I mentioned, the L, L and uh the, as I mentioned, the Lehigh and New England stripped a lot of locomotives down. So there's some detailing on the top and on the other side here, some piping detailing. That's actually removed on the Lehigh and New England version, which I thought was really interesting. Now, there is one of these still available. There uh, are still available. There is one of these that is still alive, has survived. That is number 520. Uh, I don't know of any others that survived from my, re my quick research on this. I know that 520 is just up the road at the Strasburg, in Strasburg at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. It is unrestored sitting in the yard. In fact, the tender is sitting in front of the locomotive. So they've got some work to do on that. Now, cab number 520 is available from Lionel. It hasn't been released yet. It is in the Cumberland Valley Flyer set, which comes with a sound box car. It comes with a flat car with a bump trolley on it, as well as one of the new, I believe, wood-sided cabooses also. 
I sprung for 1343, as you see here, because it has the doghouse tender. Now, 520 also has the doghouse tender, but it comes with that whole set. I didn't want to buy the whole set, and I was hoping to get one of these early on because I know there are a lot of other items coming in soon, and it's always easier when your models that you've pre-ordered come in over a period of time, not all at once. So really nice detailing here. We're gonna... Lionel has also added the wireless draw bar, so it's got an IR sensor there. The tender, like I said, has two speakers in it. It's got pickup rollers on each truck. And then the locomotive itself has three different pickup rollers, two up front and one in the back that give you some longer continuity of electrical pickup. This L1 Mikado is about 21, a little over 21 inches in length, requires 042 curves. So it can't run on the tightest of layouts. However, you could maybe give it a try, but you don't need giant 072 curves to operate this locomotive. So it's a great option for anybody with a Pensy layout, but maybe not the widest of curves. Now we've got a nice builder's plate on this locomotive as well. As you can see there, there's a bunch of add-on detailing on this locomotive as well and good contrast between the green boiler and the black running gear, I think. Personally, I think it looks really good. We've got some darkened side rods on there as well, which really look nice. The red cab windows contrast nicely as well, and there are curtains that are painted as well. So that's something newer that Lionel traditionally has not added to their locomotives. So that's nice. So one nice thing would be if we could get some drop plates on these non-Vision Line locomotives would make this even better. But this is a great little locomotive, and I think it's going to be a great addition to my fleet and many others who decide to go ahead and pick one of these up. Can't buy, but we're going to send this around the layout with some Diecast Atlas H21A. So I've got a pretty good string of these diecast hoppers. They are not light, and they are pretty difficult to move around. So that you'll see some of the pulling power that this engine has. Now it does have really good smoke coming out of the stack. The whistle took a little while for the smoke to start coming through there. There is a hose that connects from a dual fan driven smoke unit here to the stack to the whistle. And the way the whistle steam is, it looks like it actually V's off, which I think looks kind of neat. We'll get some close up shots of that as well. Let's go ahead and do the extended startup sequence on this locomotive, and then we will run it around the layout. Train one brake man. Let's get an application for continuity test. Now we also have five different whistle variations, I believe, so let's go ahead and send it through those.
All right, everybody, so that wraps this one up. What are your thoughts on this Mikado? So it's a really neat and unique locomotive. I'm really happy to have it in my collection. It's pretty cool. Now, there was one hiccup when I received this, uh, this item, and I think it's pretty important that we be straightforward with you. There was some sort of issue with the gears not sitting correctly when it ran in reverse with rolling stock. Now, you'll see some video of it today running forward. It'll be running in reverse without any issue, but when it runs in reverse with any sort of freight behind it, any sort of resistance or friction, it, the, it kind of skips and gets jammed up. So something's probably not seated correctly. Luckily, my buddy landed at Berkshire Station says, don't worry about it, send it back. I'll get it to line and get it fixed. So he's going to get that taken care of and get me a new one here for the layout. So we'll have one here. It's actually already on its way. That's customer service for you. And this one will go back to line how to get fixed. Once I get the new one, we'll get some videos out of that one to make sure everything's running perfectly smooth. This is the first time I've ever had a big issue out of the box with legacy steam engine. So I know I've been fortunate whenever you have mass produced engines like this, odds are something's going to go wrong. And that was one of them. So uh, we'll get it fixed. Just the easiest thing to do and, and get the new one on the layout. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We greatly appreciate it. What are your thoughts on this L1 Mikado? And which version that Lionel catalog do you think is the, the best one that you would order if you had the chance? Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'm Chris from Chris's Trains and Things. Have a great day.